It's a fact of life, guys, that some PDFs involve an absolute value. And then the question is, how do you deal with the absolute value when you've got a PDF and you want to find the CDF or you need to do some integration to find the expected value of x or the variance of x? So I'm going to show you. Here is a PDF that contains the absolute value of x. It's called W exponential distribution, this one. Now we're told that let's see we've got c is bigger than zero it's a parameter distribution and we have to find that to show that the mean is zero and the variance is this guy but we want to just show that the mean is zero well I guess there's three ways of doing it first look at the pdf let's sketch it you can see a thing is symmetrical around zero so then it's zero but let's do it more an algebraic way now recap the definition of uh, absolute value of x x is any number on the real line. So if x is positive then it's just x. If x is negative then we take negative of that negative to make it a positive and if x is 0 then it's 0. So absolute value of minus 5 will be here so it'll be minus minus 5 will be plus 5. That works. You can see here guys that x is a continuous random variable so if we want to compute the x of it expected value of x, sorry, use this formula and substitute for fx, I get this. Alright, so let's go to method 1 which is working from the definition. I want to show that the mean is 0. I'm looking at this expression here, you can see that since c is positive then all I have to do is show that this integral here is 0. Okay, right here. Right that strategy here guys is to break this integral down into intervals so that we can remove the absolute sign. So where we break it is such that if the x value is less than where we break it the value of the function involving it right here e to the this bit here is same as if we took x bigger than where we break it. Well by inspection you can see that that is 0. So we'll do minus infinity to 0 and 0 to plus infinity. So to check you can just pick a negative value, just calculate e to the this bit, say e to, e, e to the, take x to be minus 2 and then take x to be plus 2 and see that indeed this bit here is the same. Okay, so we've broken it down to two bits then. From minus infinity to the point 0 and from 0 to the upper limit. The absolute value for the positive x, the absolute value using definition absolute value of x is the same as the x, so we just write that down, that's for positive values of x. But for negative values of x using definition again of absolute value, it's the same as e to the c of x, so here. Now to show that it adds to zero, we can see like since these quantities here are symmetrical around zero, we're going to um, show that 1 is equal to the negative of 2. Here we use a change of variables because we're looking at this we can see that the limits are different and we've got a negative here and a plus here. Right, so let's suggest this change of variable. So I have this line here and also the limits change, 0 stays the same, minus a very big number goes to plus a very big number like that. So here you go. So this may be written like this, where the limit here, that has now changed to this. x is to minus t, this to minus ct, dx is minus dt, minus minus, cancel, so you've got plus. When you're looking at this, this is, you say it's funny because usually that's the upper limit. This is the lower limit, and the lower limit should be value value uh, lower than the upper limit, well we can use the following result here. B, uh, integral of b over a from uh, a to b where b is bigger than a is the same as this. So in other words if you interchange these two limits here, you stick a negative in front of it, it's the same thing. Uh, I've shown you here in green is the proof. So let's just use that, flip these two round, stick a negative, then it's the same. But then if you look at this expression here, just the integral bit, you can see that is the same value as 1. 
the fact that involves t instead of x doesn't is neither here nor there because you know at the end of the, it's just a dummy variable at the end of the day when you perform the integral the t is gone and because you've substituted it for these two calculate over these two limits here and it gives you the same value so if you go back here and look here it's going to be the same value but it's the negative of it so we're done okay method two this is a quicker way because it um yeah we don't have to we just use the fact that we've got a function here it's called the odd function so let's say, say a function g say its domain is r uh, maps onto r then it's we say the function is odd if this condition is satisfied uh best to explain it using some graph here so here's a here's the expectation first go all in purple here i've written the function I'm going to call g, all right? Say I'm going to plot this g from minus infinity plus infinity region, so it looks like this interval. So what this here actually says is for all x, right? So take the graph in the first quadrant, your first, second, third, fourth quadrant, first quadrant, rotate it 180 degrees around, and it's the same as this one. That means it's odd. And the result is that if you integrate this an odd function over a symmetrical interval, the answer is zero. And you can kind of see that because if you integrate this in the positive, this is a po positive value. Integrate over the negative region is a negative value of the integral, but these two values are the same on the different signs, so they cancel. Right. So to show that, we can, well, we can see it from the graph, but that's let's do it more formal. Let's use a definition here. So to show that this bit here is an odd function, so we pick any x on the real line that could be positive or negative values, it doesn't matter. So let's just say that symbol, use x to, s to say that that's the number. Then let's calculate this bit here, stick a neg neg take the negative of whatever we've picked, so substitute for x negative x. This absolute value doesn't change because the absolute value of negative x is just, just leave it like that. Uh, well, then this negative comes out, and then this is g of x, so it does satisfy. Some people, when they look at this initially, think, does that actually hold? Because um, they get mixed up with x being positive and negative. So in that case, you know, pick an example, pick x to be like plus 1, plug it in here, it works. Pick x to be negative 1, plug it in this definition, again, it works. Okay, guys, so that's, that's it. Um, if you followed that, I would try... Why don't you try calculating variance and showing that it's equal to this thing?